Praise the Lord. Here we are again. Sure wish everyone was here this morning, but I understand why we're not. I believe that there's a purpose in everything that God has for his people. I, uh, I wish that uh, it was different than what it is, but God knows. So uh, here we are today, uh, April the 11th, I think it is, 2021. Remembering back when I was a child, grade school, <laughs> history class, teacher was talking about the future, wanted us to figure out how old we would be in 2000. In the year 2000, what would our age be? And, and uh, I thought, I don't know, man, that seems so far away. To think of 2021 is never entered my mind because I was uh, of the school that Jesus would come before then. Uh, now that I've gotten older and I've studied his word in more depth, I understand that, that, uh, that uh, I was wrong in a lot of the ways I felt back in those days. How that uh, I believed that uh, before, the, you know, before 2000 God would come. And then as I began to read his word and see the prophecies that are being fulfilled and the things and the events that are coming about, I realize that uh, some of the things that we thought as, as uh, definite and had already been done were not really definite and hadn't already been done yet. So uh, we're just waiting on the Lord Jesus Christ today because he is our only hope. I've been studying this week on this message that I want to share with you today, and I, I hope that... Uh, I hope that God will help me because I've noticed something about this COVID. Uh, I've noticed that uh, it affects your thinking. Uh, I'm serious. Uh, and you know me, I, I don't need much to affect mine. But it does. And uh, I've spent about five days of uh, constant coughing. I think last night was the first night I've slept almost all night without having a coughing fit. And I appreciate that. Uh, but to, anyway, um, I've been studying on this message today. I want to try to share it with you if I can. I don't know how long it's going to be, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour and a half. But uh, I doubt if it's going to be that long. I did get a, uh, a message this morning on Facebook from Candace Smith. Uh, she's visited our church several times asking us for prayer. She's down in Texas on vacation, and she has uh, she says she has the flu, so uh, we want to remember to pray for her. We want to remember to pray for Sherman and Andy, of course, and remember Brother Will, and remember Rick Beck, Sister Karen, all those that are not here, uh, who have not been here in a while, we pray for them, and all of your needs. We want to pray for my wife's mother, who's not doing very well. God would intervene in her life. Um, it's, uh, it's not good. <laughs> Amen. I want to ask everyone if you have a request. Remember, of course, remember Brother Matt and Amanda and Taylor as they're dealing with, uh, with COVID themselves. I think we finally figured out how, how my wife got COVID, uh, but uh, uh, going through her mind and all the people she dealt with at work. So, uh, but that's, that's irregardless. It, it really is irrelevant. You have it or you don't. But anyway, uh, we want to pray for these, that God will touch their bodies and touch their lives. We want to remember our children who are lost. So we want to pray for our children today. Pray that God will have his way. Remember on April the 18th, uh, Brother, Brother Anthony uh, Hester and his church are going to be coming. I've talked to Brother Mac Brown. Uh, he may be bringing a group of people too on that date. So we're just going to have church that day. And hopefully everybody will be over this and it will all be good. 
and uh, we'll be able to worship together. He's going to bring his worship team, and uh, we're just going to have church. Uh, thank you, Jesus. So pray for that. Pray that everything works out so that we can all gather together that day and, uh, and have a good time in the Lord. That's what we want. Pray for our city. Pray that God will reach down into the lives of the people who live here and uh, reach down into their hearts. And uh, I'm, I'm praying God will do something to wake some people up. I'm getting kind of concerned that uh, we see it. Everybody says they see it coming, but nobody's trying to prepare for it. And uh, even those of us who know it's coming and who are preparing are not preparing as well as we should. I don't understand, I don't understand the spiritual battle that's going on, but I do understand that we need to pray more than we've ever prayed before. And as we do that, why don't we all go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to meet our needs today because, well, we can't meet them ourselves. God, we praise you and give you glory. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. Help us, Jesus, to be children of God. Help us, Lord, to be examples of your glory and your grace and your mercy. Help us, God, to move into your spirit, Lord Jesus, and to walk after you in the spirit of Almighty God, to know your word, to love your word, to serve you, Jesus, with everything that's in us. I pray for our sick loved ones, God, those who are battling cancers, those who are battling different types of diseases, I pray in your name that you would touch their bodies, their minds, their hearts, and touch their souls, God, we pray. I pray today for our children, Lord, that you move on behalf of our children and make a way for them to be saved, God. No matter what it takes, we want our children to be saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're glad you're here, and uh, we're glad you're watching. Forgive me as I drink because I'm still having some problems with my voice and I have to have something to kind of <coughs> cool that down a little bit. Praise the Lord. As I was, as I was studying, uh, getting ready for today, I, um, I came across something and I, I thought, and uh, that thought has led me to where I am now. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure how it's going to go. Uh, I'm going to be reading out of Amos chapter 8, and uh, the thought was <coughs> about backsliding, backsliders, but uh, that's what I was beginning to think about, but then the Lord began to deal with me about some other things <coughs> as I began to read this chapter. It began to ring to me today uh, as, as if it was something that was happening right now in 2021 instead of in the day of Amos. And uh, I, 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 the more I read it, and I read it once, and I read it twice, and I read it three times, and the more I read it, and I thought, dear God, it, he's talking about today, and he's talking about the world that we live in today. And uh, I want to read to you uh, uh, quite a bit. I usually don't read this much at once, but... Uh, I want to, I'm going to begin today in, in Amos chapter 8. I'm going to begin with verse number 1. I know I put 6 on there, Les, but we'll go to verse number 1. And this is the Lord speaking. This is Amos speaking at the Lord that showed him. He said, Thus the Lord hath showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. That should mean that all is well, right? Everything looks good. we got a basket of Good summer fruit, everything looks great, and the uh, future's bright. But then he goes on in verse number two, and he said, He said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people, Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So he said, you're looking at a basket of summer fruit and you're thinking this is great. We have sustenance. It's going to be good. And then the Lord speaks to you and says, don't look at what you see. Understand what I'm telling you. It may look good, but it's the end. 
It may look like everything's great, but I'm not passing by this way anymore. I'm here today to tell you I, I'm going to follow what I feel in the Holy Ghost today, and I have, to, I, have to, I have to do that. But I feel like that we're coming to that place. We've already came to that place where God said, I'm done with you. I have tried my best for the last four or five years to, to get you to understand that, that the time is short and that you need to get right with me, but yet you have not repented of your sins. You've continued on. You've kept on sinning. You've kept living in your sins. You've acted like, like everything's great. and You know in your heart that it's not. You keep moving in the direction that, that is away from me and not toward me. You keep getting closer and closer to the world and further and further away from me. He said, Amos, don't look at what it looks like because I'm telling you what it is. We look around us and I, I, it blows me away when I see all of the people who know the truth and who know about Jesus and who know about the infilling of his spirit and who know what it means to be touched by the Holy Ghost. And I see them as they, they are just kind of lackadaisical and they have a spirit of apathy and they're not really concerned about tomorrow. And I'm thinking to myself, dear God, we see all of these things that are happening around us, how that we're losing our country. Our country is gone, folks. We're losing our freedoms every day. Our liberties are going to be are taken away from us. Every day they're cutting away and whittling away and chopping away at everything that we've ever held dear. And it's not just this thing that's going on in our government and our nation, but it's this thing that's going on in the world, all around the world, not just us, but every nation is going through these spasms that we're going through because Satan knows that he has but a short time. And he's making every I see a basket of summer fruit, and it looks great. But it's not great. Amen. This is not going to feed you. It's not going to sustain you. It's not going to bring you through. You need to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. I'm crying out to somebody today. I feel it in my spirit that you need to wake up and you need to get on the stick. You need to get off of the sidelines and you need to get out there in the field and get to work for Jesus or it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Sit around and act like everything's fine, but it's not fine. We think everything's good, but it's not good. Amen. The Lord has spoken. Go over it. You can find it in Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. He told Israel, he said, they told Jeremiah to tell Israel, I'm tired of your, I'm tired of your repentance. I'm tired of you. I'm, I'm tired of you asking forgiveness. I'm sick of it. Because you ask forgiveness for naught. It's become a byword. Every time you turn around, oh Lord, forgive me. It's a byword. It no longer has any meaning. There's no, no, no feeling behind it. There's no sorrow. There's no repentance. It's just words. God said, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Verse number three, And the songs in the temple shall be wailings or howlings. In that day saith the Lord God, There shall be many dead bodies, in every place they shall cast them from the, forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. That's where we are today, folks. Swallowing up the needy, making the poor of the land. That's the world we live in today. They don't care anything about us, the people who are out here who are in the trenches, who are working. They don't, the, the people in charge don't care about any of this anymore. And yet we can't see that the devil is working behind the scenes to destroy every life in this nation and every life in this world that he can destroy, to keep us as far away from God. Preachers out there preaching for filthy lucre's sake, lasciviousness, and all of this stuff that's going on in the world today. Give me your money. Give me this. Give me that. And... I, I, I just blows me away what's going on around us. I, I can't get away from it. I keep reading the scriptures and God's speaking to me saying, the time is short, it's drawing near, the day is coming. I'm going to come back and I'm going to take those who are ready and those who are not are going to be left behind. Those who are not are going to be left behind. You think that because they're a good person they're going to heaven. 
You think that because they do good things, they're going to heaven? You think that because they live a certain way that they're fine, everything's okay? But in my Bible, Jesus said you must be born again. I've taught these things for years. Laid in the bed last night thinking about all of this, and thinking about how that uh, taught, I've taught for years on the new birth, and how that I've taught on the oneness of God, and the necessity of Jesus' name, baptism, the assurance of it, and how that it's needed, and how that God's word doesn't change. I've taught on all of these things for all of these years. And yet Satan comes in and he, he still seems to somehow be able to fool us, to trick us. Hallelujah. What a horrible, horrible state we're in today in this world. What a horrible condition that we are in in this world today. In this, God is speaking to the people of Jerusalem by the prophet. He's warning them. He's letting them know. You see, if you read on a little bit further in, in uh, Amos, the Bible said that the day is going to come. Jesus told them the day is going to come when there's going to come a famine in the land. And that famine is going to be of, of, of hearing the word of God. I used to think that was today, but it's not. I used to think that was talking about our day and our time, but he's not talking about our day and our time. He's talking about in the day of Amos. You realize that, uh, that, uh, that there was a 400 years of silence before Matthew was written. God did not speak to the children of Israel for 400 years. Amen. Why? Because he had grown tired of their repentance. Think about it. What would it feel like if God withdrew his spirit from you today? What would it be like if God said, I'm not touching you anymore? What would it be like if, if, if you knelt down to pray and you could feel nothing? And you couldn't feel anything spiritual at all in your life? What would it be like to realize that you had backslidden your last time? That you had walked away from God for the last time and you'd never be able to come back to Him again? You would think that I would be preaching this message to a church full of people, and I would, but for some reason, somebody's out there watching this now, and you need to understand something. You need to get serious about walking with Jesus. You need to get serious about walking with the Lord. And I know this is not anything. I got three or four or five pages of notes here. What I'm talking right now has nothing to do with any notes that I have written down because God has just said, hey, I'm sitting back there before church, and I'm, I'm reading it again, and God is speaking to me. You need to let people know that there's a basket of summer fruit, and everything looks great, but I'm telling you it's not great. I'm telling you the day's coming soon when people are going to be dropping like flies, and they're going to be with silence taking the dead bodies off the streets. Uh, that thing is coming. It's coming quickly. I feel it in my spirit. I feel like God is trying to tell us something. He's trying to warn us. He's trying to let us know that death is coming to the world and people are going to be dying like flies and we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to be ready to meet Him in the air. We need to be ready when that day comes because death may come and take us also. <laughs> My God, what a God we serve. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I apologize uh, for my deafness. But somebody needs to hear me. You need to repent right where you are right now. You need to ask God to forgive you right where you are right now. You need to go and sin no more. Amen. Get yourself right with God. I realize it. I got a lot of people that think I'm terrible because of the way I preach. But I'm telling you. If you're not right with God, you're not going to heaven. You can't just act like you want to act and live like you want to live and expect God to take you out of here. It's not going to happen. You can't follow the devil and, and be saved by Jesus. Amen. Yeah, but I'm planning on it. Planning on it don't get you anywhere. Doing it does. 
but I'm planning on changing it. Well, you keep in the planning stage, and then God's going to come, and you're going to be left still planning. Amen. Planning don't save you. Planning does not save you. Intentions do not save you. Actions save you. Repentance saves you. Walking with Jesus saves you. Being baptized in his name saves you. Being filled with the Spirit saves you. And walking after that Spirit saves you. But planning on it, wishing it to happen, is not going to get you to heaven. You need to make up your mind today whether you're going to walk with Jesus or not. Because I'm telling you, I feel it in my spirit. I don't prophesy stuff, but I'm telling you, people are going to start dying like flies around us and we're going to be wondering what's going on in Jesus name in Jesus name I feel it I feel this in me so bad and it's just got to come out I know I my God help me Jesus my God help me the day's coming Amos listen the day's coming. I'm done. I'm done fooling around with you. I'm done messing with you. You've bragged, talked about how great it is, how that you don't need this and you don't need that. You've got everything of God that you need. God's going to tell, God's telling you right now today, you need more. Because you're only fooling yourself. Help me, Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm asking you to forgive me now because I'm telling you what God is telling me. Amen. I'm telling you what God is telling me. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. There's something coming to this land. There's something coming to this country that's going to surprise everyone. It's going to freak people out to the point where they're not going to know what to do. Something coming. There's something coming. I feel it in the Spirit of God. It's here. It's here. It's here and it's all around us. Jesus is getting ready to do something great. God is getting ready to move in a mighty way. People are going to be crying to get into the church doors. People are going to be beating the doors down. And I'm telling you, those of you Christians, those of I'm talking to Christians right now, those of you Christians who haven't taken this seriously, who haven't developed a prayer life, who haven't spent your time seeking after God Almighty, you haven't given Him your whole heart, but your heart is everywhere else and doing everything else. I'm warning you right now, wake up, because if you don't, God's going to move off and leave you behind. Yeah, yeah. Gonna move off and leave you behind. Oh God, help us, Jesus. Oh, but Brother Potts, I'm fine. Okay. All right. I'm just telling you, something's coming. Something's coming. The Lord's coming. Wrath is coming. Judgment's coming. This world is doomed. The church is not doomed, but the world is doomed. I don't want to be a part of the world. I don't want to love the things of the world. I don't want anything in this world to take me away from my closeness with Jesus Christ. I don't want anything in this world to take me away from my walk with God. I don't want anything in this world to keep me out of heaven. I want to go. I want to go. I know there's those who, who don't feel this way. They trust in Jesus foolishly. Yeah, that's what I said. They trust in Jesus foolishly. Jesus said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have salvation. Paul said that there are people, or Peter said, there are people who read Paul's writings and they wrestle with his writings to their own destruction. These are not sinners. These are Christians who wrestle with the writings of Paul to their own destruction. Well, they try to find, they skip the book of Acts and they run into Romans and they try to find salvation in the book of Romans and it's not there. Salvation's not in the book of Romans. Romans is written to a church that was already formed in the book of Acts where salvation took place. 
trying to tell people how to continue to walk with God, how to live for God, how to search out God, how to be right with God, how to be righteous in this world to live for Jesus. That's what he said. They don't want you to see the truth. They don't want us to see the truth. They don't want us to see Jesus' name, baptism. Satan has hidden it so well. And you can read it in the Bible, and yet people still don't believe it. Taught on it so much. They don't want us to see righteous, giving ourselves completely 100% to God, selling out to Him. That, that our pleasure should not be in what we want, but what He wants. It's the way we need to live in these last days. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the COVID affected me, huh? But I feel like there's something else inside of me that's screaming, God, save our souls. Save our souls. Save our souls. Save our church. Save our children. Save our families. I watch people. I watch people as they forget all about everything they ever knew about God and they just walk away from the church and walk away from out into the world as if nothing is going on and they they think everything's wonderful and fine. It's all going to be good. And they forgot about Jesus. And they forgot about Calvary. And they forgot about the blood of the Lamb. And they forgot about the sacrifice that was made for them to be saved. They forgot about all of the prayer and all of the time and all of the moves and touches of God that they felt in His presence. And they walk away way oh Jesus help us today God to understand we need a move of God in our lives greater than anything else that's ever happened to us we need a move of God in our lives that will transform us that will cause us to be different than what we've ever been Paul said therefore be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind Renew our minds, God. Transform us. Let us not be conformed to this world and the things of this world to walk after this world. Let us walk after you, Lord Jesus. Do your will, almighty God. Hallelujah. I'd have probably been better off if I'd have stuck with my notes. But I can't because I feel something inside of me. There's an urgency that I have. I'm telling you, you guys know me. You know me for a long time. There's an urgency inside of me. There's a cry going forth inside of me that's saying, please, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wake up to your need. God, oh God, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. But even in his judgment that he brought against Israel, there was mercy and God's grace, God's mercy in the midst of his judgment. In the midst of his judgment, there was mercy. Jesus talked about how he's going to turn everything around. He's going to turn it around. The judgment that he brought up against Israel, God spoke of how he was going to turn it around. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, he is, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle, broken down the middle wall of partition between us How did he do this? How did he do this? By the blood of the Lamb, by the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have been brought nigh to God. Why? Because of the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 5 of that same chapter says, Having abolished, I'm sorry, verse 15, Having abolished in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandment, the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. What does that mean? 
that Jesus Christ came. He took upon himself all the sins of the world, hung himself on that tree, let himself die right there before everyone. Die a cursed death. The Bible said cursed is the man that hang upon their tree. Jesus hung upon that tree for you and me. In the midst of judgment, in the midst of his coming, in the midst of whatever it is that I feel in my spirit that's coming to this nation, quickly, it's coming quickly, in the midst of all that, there's still mercy, there's still grace. Even in this crying out to you today, there's still something inside of me that's pleading God's mercy. God's mercy. So now we have access to the Father by one spirit, that spirit of Jesus Christ. The spirit of his mercy, the spirit of his grace. No longer can we be held hostage. That's the thing that, that you need to understand is there's no excuse now. You can say, well, the devil made me do it. No, he, he didn't make you. You did it because you wanted to. You did it because you wanted to. The Bible said there's no temptation that taken you that that's what's common to man. It's taken you because it's, it's just a common thing. This flesh and its desires, and when sin is conceived, it brings for, or when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin is finished, it brings forth death. But Jesus came so that he could remove that punishment of sin by his blood on the cross. No longer can we be held hostage by sin with, the, with no forgiveness. But we have been made free by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. We've got we to gotta understand that it's by his blood we're made free. It's when we come to Calvary in full repentance to him. Yes, yes, I, I know I've spent the last 20 minutes talking about judgment. But in the midst of that judgment, there's still grace. There's still an opportunity for you to be saved. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. That's what he wants, to dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, that faith that God wants to be in your heart. You see, that's where it's all at. The Bible said where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I'm going to ask you a question. Is your treasure in the things of this world, in the good times of this world, is your treasure in the happiness that the world and the things of this world can bring you? Or is your treasure in Jesus Christ? What makes, you tre what makes you happy? What gives you joy? What makes you feel good? When you, do you come to church excited because you want to be in the presence of God? Do you come to church thinking, man, maybe God's going to do something great today? Do you come to church looking forward to a move of God's Spirit or you just come because you have to? If you come because you have to, go home. Just go home. Go do whatever. Go fishing. Because it's not doing you any good to come here. But if you really want to be saved and you really want to have a walk with God and you really want to go to heaven, then you're going to really want Him more than anything else. If you want Him, you want others to have Him too. I don't know. I know this is terrible. I'm not doing a great job, but I'm pouring my heart out today. Ephesians 3, 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Is my heart with Christ? Am I rooted and grounded in love? Now we are directed by love, by grace, by mercy, by hope, in the blood of Jesus Christ directed by these things to follow after God, to walk after God, to follow after His Spirit, to walk in His Spirit. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I want to walk after His Spirit. I want to walk after His Spirit. Chapter 3 and verse 5 says, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patient waiting for Christ. See, that's a lot of our problems. 
we get tired of waiting. I, I, I really believe that if, if God came into, into your house right now and stood before you and said, hey, uh, you're going to die in five years, 36 minutes, and 15 seconds. I really believe a lot of us would uh, follow after whatever we wanted to do until about five years and 30 minutes, and then we'd start praying. That's, that's, the way, that's what men do. They don't really get it serious until it's close to the end. They don't really get serious until they realize that it's soon going to be over because we all have this, this foolish idea that we're going to live forever. Nobody walks around every day thinking, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. We, we get it in our mind that we're going to be here until the end of time, I guess. I don't know. And it seems like it gets more uh, easier for us to think we're going to live forever the older we get. And then the older we get, it seems like we ought to be understanding that we're our, that our mortality is even closer than it was when we were born. It just blows me away how people think and how our minds work. <laughs> Amen. You see a guy who's 80 years old who thinks, oh, I'm here, I've been here 80 years, I'm going to keep on going, you know. You see a guy who's 16 who's worried that he might, uh, you know, have an accident and get killed. It's crazy. And as he gets older, he begins to get used to life. You know, you get used to life and you get used to living and you don't think about death until the doctor comes in and says, hey, you know, you got, you got this is wrong with you and, and you're not going to live. And then you start thinking about it. I think sometimes we need to think about it when there's nothing wrong. I know people who are scared to go to the doctor because they don't want to know. <laughs> That's kind of foolish, isn't it? Knew somebody one time that didn't want to go to the doctor because they didn't want to know. And finally, whenever they got talked into going to the doctor, they had cancer, and the cancer had grown so much inside of them that it was too late, couldn't help them. If they would have went to the doctor two or three years earlier, they could have been cured. The doctor said it was highly curable if it was caught early. But because of their fear, they died. Because of their fear, they died. Because of their fear of knowing, they died. A lot of people are afraid to know. That's why they're going to be lost. They really are. Because if you tell me what I'm doing is wrong, then I may have to do something to change it. So if I don't know what I'm doing is wrong, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Lord direct your hearts to the love of God. Jude chapter, 20, uh, Jude chapter 21. No, Jude verse 21. Hallelujah. You see, in the midst of all of what I said in the beginning of things that are coming and of, and of judgment and of you needing to hurry, now the Lord's trying to tell you He wants to put His love in your heart. He wants to direct you into the love of God. He wants to bring you into salvation. You see, in the midst of judgment, there's still mercy. In the midst of judgment, there's still mercy. Amen. 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 Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I'm looking. I'm looking, Jesus. I'm looking for your mercy, Jesus. God, help me. Nobody deserves, but Jesus gave it to us anyway. Nobody deserves, but Jesus died for us anyway. Nobody's righteous, but Jesus gave us his spirit anyway. Nobody's holy, but Jesus gave himself for us anyway. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of the judgment that's coming to the world, God is calling out to you right now, yes, I know what I said to you, but I'm telling you now, it does not have to be that way. You don't have to die lost. You don't have to go to hell. You can be saved. Your choice. Your choice. Sometimes I wish God would take our choice away from us and just say, you're going to be saved whether you like it or not. But that's not happening. Because God gave us free will. He gave us free will. So in all this, we see the love of God. Even toward those who are cold, 
and those who are indifferent toward him, he still made a new and living way. For Paul said in Romans 8 and 5, he said, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right now, if you're right where you are and God has touched your heart right in your home, right in your home, if God has touched your heart, just lift your hand to God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I need to live for you and help me to find you. Pray that prayer. Let God touch your life. But that's not the ending. That's just the beginning. Go on and find you a place where you can pray where they believe in prayer, get baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll speak with other tongues. The Bible says you will. You can do that. You can do that. I don't care what a preacher says to you. It's still for us today. It's still here today. He died for us. Verse 9, much more than being, being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. By his life. Was it just his death? that saved us, but it's his life. It wasn't his burial that saved us, it was his resurrection. It was that new creature that he became. That carnal, that flesh that became incarnate. Christ Jesus. Amen, what a God we serve. His life, his love, his mercy. Amen. You will die in your sins if you do not repent of your sins. You will die in your sins if you don't repent of your sins. I mean, all of them. All of them. Every one of them. Every thought, every intent, every desire. Lay it out before God. Turn your life around today. Let go of the world. Give it all to Jesus. <coughs> Give it all to Jesus. I think this COVID's affected me. But I think the Spirit of God has affected me this morning. Because I want to wake somebody up here today. I want you to understand. It's not all about you. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. And Jesus made it all about you. Because he loves you and he, he wants you to be saved. Because he gave himself on Calvary for you. While you were a sinner, he died for you. You don't have to be lost. I just read to you today how that he made a way in the midst of judgment. Yes, everything looks good, but that basket of summer fruit is rotten on the inside. It's rotten. Thank you for everybody. I, I thank everyone for listening today and uh, for being with us today. I pray for you guys that God will touch your lives. I pray that he'll be with you and keep you in Jesus' name. God bless you all in fear of the Lord. Have a good week. Uh, I'm thinking Wednesday night we'll be able to have church. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I don't want to be pre premature. I definitely don't want to be the reason for anyone to get to COVID in our church. So God bless you all. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord.